This is example 1.5-6. A specimen of methacrylate plastic is tested in tension at room temperature, producing the stress strain data listed in the accompanying table. Plot the stress strain curve and determine the proportional limit, modulus of elasticity, which is the slope of the initial part of the stress strain curve, and the yield stress at 0.2% offset. Is the material ductile or brittle? All right, so we've got this specimen here, and it is being pulled in tension. And we have our stress strain data from this test. So basically, what this is saying is at this strain, we have a stress of this much. And so we need to plot this on a graph, and then we're going to use that to find these other values. So let's write our givens and finds. So really all we're given is, um, we can just say the table for this one. And then there's a few things that we are finding. So we're going to make our stress strain curve. And we're going to find the proportional limit, which is the stress at which the curve stops being linear. And then the modulus of elasticity, which it explains is the slope for the first part. And the yield stress at 0.2% offset. And I'll talk a little bit more about that once we have our, our graph. And then we will determine whether the material is ductile or brittle. All right, so I am using sigma PL for the proportional limit and sigma Y for the or the yield stress. So now we need to write, draw our single underline. And now we're going to create our plot using the table that was given to us. And so for our scale, we're going to start at zero for each of them. But for stress, we're going to go up to about 60 megapascals. And for our strain, up to 0 0.05. I also want to point out that we always use strain for our x values and stress for our y values. And that's just the convention of how we draw this curve. And so that's important to keep in mind. All right, so here's our plot. As you can see, it's not going to be perfect doing it by hand. And so it's kind of, since our values that we're going to be finding are based off the graph, it's going to be a little bit arbitrary. So just try to get it close. Um, first thing we're going to do is find the proportional limit. So where the plot stops becoming linear, and if we think about it as like a straight line and then it starts to curve um, and not looking too close at the individual points, just like the general trend, I would say it stops being linear right around here. Um, again, this is going to be somewhat arbitrary. Um, so let's just pick this point as our proportional limit. And so we're basically saying that it is a straight line from the origin to that point. And then it is going to turn and curve until failure. And so our proportional limit is going to be the stress value. Uh, we should label our axes. And 
and so the stress value of this point is going to be our proportional limit. And this is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So this is going to be 44. 44 megapascals. And the next thing we need to find is our modulus of elasticity, which is the slope of this line. And since this line always goes to the origin, then we can just use this point here, the end of the line, and use that to find the slope. So remember, the slope is rise over run. So that's going to be our stress over strain. And if you remember, that's the equation for E. It is the stress over strain. So in this situation, um, power off. we're going to use our uh, proportional limit over the strain at that same point. This is going to be 44 megapascals over 0.0184. And this is equal to 2.39 gigapascals. And remember, our unit prefixes, mega means 10 to the 6, while giga means 10 to the 9th. All right, and next we're going to find our yield stress. And it says it's the yield stress at 0.2% offset. So what does that mean? Well, if we look down here, our strain is basically a fraction of an offset. So if we turn it into a percent, this tick mark right here is 1% offset. So 0.2% offset is going to be a fifth of the way along that. And again, this is all visual, so it's going to be a little bit arbitrary. But so right here is going to be our 0.2%. And that basically what we do is we follow the slope. And again, this is not very straight. So I'm going to use one of these. Just use a straight line from here. That's parallel to our slope until we hit our curve. So right about there. And so I can say that this is our uh, point of yield stress at 0.2% offset. And so, OK, so basically what this line is is saying that um, once you leave are um, the point where our stress is linear, you start to have permanent deformation. So if you stay on the line and you relieve the stress, it'll go back down to zero. But as soon as you leave, it'll cause permanent damage and it'll follow the slope back down. And instead of going to zero, it'll go to, in this case, 0.2% offset. So this is what we're trying to find, and I'm going to say that it is roughly halfway between these two points, so point 0.6 and 7. 
And so we have our yield stress. We're just going to take the average of them to get an approximation of what that is. So that is 48.2 plus 53.9 over 2, and this is in megapascals. And this is equal to 51.1 megapascals. And finally, we were asked to determine whether the material is ductile or brittle. And if we look at our stress strain curve, we can see uh, soon after it starts yielding, it breaks. So ductile materials will follow a curve that is more like this. And depending on how ductile it is, they can go pretty far before they actually break. So since we can see that this breaks so soon after yielding, uh, we can determine that this is a brittle material. And that is our last answer. And so we are done with this problem.